Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Rendy, SVP and General Manager of Products here at PagerDuty. I'm excited to talk with you all today about customer service and how PagerDuty's partnership with Zendesk is so important to many of you. Companies today, and, and to give a little bit of context to this again, I, I, I think it's important to give a little background color. So when I think about all the organizations and our, and our mutual customers today, more is riding on their digital services and the customer experience, which is an extension of that than ever before. You know, digital apps and services are prevalent. They're everywhere. People are using them for everything today and in more important ways uh, than, than you know, a year ago and at a greater rate. So it's, it's true for every industry, whether it's retail, whether it's media, whether it's hospitality, uh, it, that everybody is more reliant on this than ever before. And when there is a disruption, when there is a problem, the expectations of customers and the retention of those customers is so important. There are a few interesting stats um, over the past year, and some of these include that you know, a customer is four times more likely to buy from a competitor if there's a problem uh, with the service related to that product versus the price or the product itself. Or it takes you know, a dozen positive customer experiences to make up for one negative experience. Or you know, over half the time, problems are identified from customers, even today, more than you know, organizations and companies knowing about that first. Those are you know, some scary statistics. It's not all doom and gloom though. Uh, you know, another study said that in almost three quarters of the time, customers will share their good experiences with others as well. So again, really excited today in our fireside chat to welcome one of our longtime partners. Uh, we've built a deep partnership and even a better integration between our two platforms. I'd like to welcome Erica Wass, Zendesk's Senior Director of Product, to share some of her thoughts on customer service and how that's been changing and evolving over the past 12 to 18 months. Erica, welcome. It's great to have you here today. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here virtually, maybe one day in person. I hope things are going well. Uh, a bit about me. I've been on the product team at Zendesk for nearly six years now, and I'm responsible for a bunch of our platform products. And I'm really looking forward to chatting about customer service uh, and pager duty today. Well, thanks for joining us. I, I appreciate you taking the time. We're honored to have you. I think this topic, this topic of how customers are adapting to the new normal, how customer service organizations and developer and IT ops organizations are adapting is so important. And I kind of like to start the discussion today by really asking you a little bit about that, just to share like how during the pandemic you've seen your business change and how customer service organizations have had to adapt to that. I think the pandemic is so interesting because we're all going through it. It's truly a global phenomenon. It's not not hitting any reach of the planet. And I think after the realization of what was happening sunk in and, and businesses began to understand what the nature of this was going to be and, and how long it was going to take, the pandemic really forced a transition to truly digital first world. Uh, and I think that, that that's really interesting because prior to the pandemic, businesses would take whatever timeline was most useful to them. It may be that some were on a fast timeline to do that and some were on a slower and all of a sudden everything sped up. E-commerce sales jumped 30% during the pandemic, according to one of our data points, and customer expectations are high, right? Expectations, it's interesting because what's happening is, is that those who are doing this really well are setting the bar. They're setting the bar high. They're heavily investing in their customer experience, and that's affecting uh, whole verticals and whole industries that way. It's become really important. Uh, it's always been important, but increasingly important to have a fast time to value. Uh, simplicity and agility are extremely important. And then we think that as interactions have shifted online, businesses have needed, of course, powerful tools to help communicate, to help engage with their customers in their preferred channels. Of course, we all see it. I think that uh, as a general matter, as a consumer, I have high demands of businesses as well. And so I don't think that that sort of intelligence as we look through the industry is really that much of a surprise. We have a, 
uh, a study that we've done, CX Trends, which we do uh, this year, is called Digital Tipping Point, uh, and it shows some really interesting data. The companies plan to invest more in customer experience areas, increasingly in big areas for service across more channels, better IT security, adaptable tech, and internal collaboration, which is a great segue. What have you been finding, Jonathan? Well, it's funny. Um, we did some surveys uh, when everything occurred in March, when everything started to happen and people started to have to work from home and there was this increased demand, you know, for all their digital services. And we found some really interesting trends across some key verticals. We Obviously, e-learning. We saw a huge spike uh, from our customers who are e-learning. Uh, same with retail. People, whether it was uh, essential or non-essential retail, so very interesting trends in a few of these areas. And what I find was kind of also interesting is with higher usage in these areas, there were a greater number of issues. Uh, and so I almost a third more issues because the demand was going up on all of these services. So obviously at PagerDuty, we track uh, incidents, major issues, disruptions to these businesses uh, that, that teams have to jump on. What was interesting as kind of the, the year has progressed, we've seen those companies actually get better and better. So with the increased demand, their time to address and fix those issues has dropped by a third. So one, demand went up and more stress, more people uh, having to jump on these issues, but like anything else, practice makes perfect. And we found that then over the next few months, those teams with that increased use actually have gotten better at responding to these issues. So I find that really interesting and it kind of maps very closely to some of the statistics that you're talking about too. I think that goes to the agility that, that people have uh, and the ability to learn. And the more you try something and do something, the better at it you get. Uh, there's a, a statistic that we have where a good, experience, a good customer experience makes all the difference. We found that CX leaders grow revenue 5x faster. So those who are really thinking about this space of customer experience and, and how to do it better uh, are doing better uh, as a business as well. You know, it's interesting. A good follow-up to that is, those are some general macro trends, but you just touched on it. Like, so <clears throat> what's the impact on the teams? And in speaking about some of the, the culture, the cultural changes um, and the impact really on individual customer service agents, you know, you think about how their work has changed from maybe being all in one location and being able to collaborate by standing up over a cubicle wall and ask a question to someone and all of a sudden being at home. How have you seen kind of the, you know, your users of Zendesk, how have you seen them have to adapt and change? And, and what do you see in their needs that are changing now that people are working more, you know, remote? Isn't it, isn't it interesting how we think about this history? It's modern history. It just happened. And yet we can think of it really philosophically and historically in that way. Like we had a confluence of events where consumer and business demands for digital transactions are at a high. We're in a pandemic. Employees are asked to work remotely uh, all over the world. I mean, uh, it feels uh, distant and yet it, it's all very real and very new. But it took processes, tools, technologies, the rituals of these teams uh, that often are grouped together in some ways, uh, shapes or forms, had to move to remote, had to use tools to be able to do the work that they did, hopefully as effectively uh, as possible as they did before uh, in, in disparate areas, highly distributed, uh, not only somewhat distributed, if we think about how we typically have done geographical distribution, perhaps in, in business. So they've embraced digital, uh, diverse, digital first teamwork, uh, we've empowered agents with easy to use integrated tools to replicate in the good ways, the old ways that they worked, the positive aspects of that. So with better collaboration, customer support teams can deliver great experiences and build stronger relationships. Many companies accelerated their adoption and usage of AI powered chatbots as well to help customers quickly get answers to common questions. So it's interesting, you know, there, there's been this shift, right? And Everybody talks about kind of the new normal, but I do feel, and I'm very, I'm an optimistic, I'm a glass half full kind of individual. I, I feel like things are, at least in my neck of the woods, starting to get back to more normal of what I remember. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, in, in Australia where you are as well. And 
you know, knock on wood, it continues to be that way. But how do you think things will change going forward? So, you know, there was this event, things radically changed. Now, you know, as we come out of this, uh, how, do you see, how do you see things heading at this point? I mentioned before the expectations are high and I don't think people will lower their expectations. Uh, and so it's pretty clear that business can't go back to the way it was. Uh, you can't put it back in the box. Uh, you're not going to go backwards, but we can continue to be more strategic uh, and think about how to solve for that. We found that uh, continuing our customers' capabilities to be where their customers are has been key. So the biggest evolution is that customers demand better ways of communicating with companies, uh, particularly with messaging, uh, which has become more essential this year. Uh, we found that messaging has grown faster than any other customer service channel. And we think will remain a dominant channel for self-service as well as complex conversations uh, into the future. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, my parents who are um, computer literate, I wouldn't say savvy, but literate, you know, they've had to learn whether it's ordering their groceries, whatever. They've, they've created a whole new mode in which they operate. And just talking to them the other day, I don't think they'll ever go back to fully just shopping in the store. They're going to continue. And, and that's a whole different demographic, probably having to call into service desks and help desks and use digital services that have never before. So yeah, new demographics and new expectations, as you say. Um, another question is, you know, we view the pager duty audiences, you know, our developers and our IT ops community as always being on the front lines, you know, full service ownership. You build it, you ship it, you own it kind of mentality. And, and, and really, customer service you know, pioneered that. They've always been on the front lines. They're always you know, the front door to the business. How should these teams, you know, for, our, for our customers, um, how should they think about working with customer service you know, during a major disruption? Uh, like the developers working with customer service, how should customer service think about working with development. It's a partnership, a collaborative effort. And if I can give a metaphor, it's like a relay race. And uh, the first person's running, they, they collect the information, they need to pass the baton to a team who needs to act on it, the team needs to pass it back. And if at any point that transferring of the baton isn't happening or slowing it down, then the end result for the customer is not, uh, not really there. And so I think that everyone working together to resolve issues, um, to bring the right information to the forefront, to enable the customer to return to their day and not have to even think about this because this isn't part of their day, right? This is our operations, uh, the better. So the more clean and streamlined the comms are, uh, the more trust that the business has for their customer. And so looking at our software, the Zendesk Support Suite empowers the communication when integrated with, for example, pager duty for customer service, support agents can collaborate with the ops teams to investigate issues, and then they can collaborate together to better serve the customer. So in the end, you're responding faster, you're communicating more clearly, you're wasting less time, you're being more efficient and, and bringing more customer happiness to the world. Yeah, it's... Um... It, it makes me think about kind of the maturity that a lot of these organizations, you know, that it hasn't been really that long that they've had to collaborate, especially with a full digital business. And so some organizations are on the far end of maturity, some are not. And it's interesting, we see a little, we see an evolution happen, <clears throat> kind of the first step a lot of times, especially with organizations, we see, I, we see a lot of this with our mutual customers um, that just being, available uh, around the clock following the sun, even if they're not in geographic locations, we call it kind of the 24 by seven use case, integrating that as a core part of Zendesk to always have teams available, kind of step one. Um, step two to your point of, you know, the relay race and collaborating is almost in a way as sometimes the dev and IT ops teams, they, they find out first about an issue and they need to treat customer service as a stakeholder. And they need to be able to, in real time, as they're working a major disruption, share all of the updates. Um, so, you know, the customer service teams, of course, can communicate proactively and prepare their comms for, for their constituents. Um, the third area of maturity I find really interesting, I want to ask you about this, is we have this concept of you know, full case ownership. We really want to help empower on the pager duty side, customer service agents 
to do more, to be able to act more. I'm really curious um, in this last case, full case ownership, your thoughts on this and like what from the, from the Zendesk lens, what are you really trying to, to get to <clears throat> in empowering agents who are again on the front lines to do more, like cradle to grave for cases? So um, <clears throat> the more information and context that we can provide to agents, the better. And that comes from what the customer is, has done, is doing, uh, has experienced, and it comes from what is being done in the moment to resolve whatever the issue may be or the reason that they're contacting uh, customer service in the first place. And so by having ownership of individual functions be really high quality and then building the seams between the teams to be able to pass the baton quite quite efficiently is achieving not only department goals and SLAs, but also company goals. Because the company's goals are, again, to resolve the customer's inquiry uh, and make them happy. We've seen that the statistics that say that, uh, you know, a poor experience with a company lasts a long time and, and as good as we can make it, the better. Uh, What's better than even being responsive is also how you identify problems and how you can be proactive in that nature. Uh, so contextual information, being reactive, but also having the capabilities to be proactive. If you know there's an issue going on internally, don't wait for someone to contact you. Let them know. Uh, give them a heads up. And then it saves that communication. And the, the person on the receiving end can be like, oh, great. OK, there's an issue. I understand it. I don't need to chase up how to get it resolved. I, as a, as a customer, uh, don't need to do all the legwork in order to achieve the success that I want on the other end for my systems to be operating as I expect them to be. You know, you're touching on see, a great, oh, Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say you're touching on a great point, which is <clears throat> how do teams get more proactive? Because then that directly impacts customer experience. And you, you mentioned it a little bit, which is how can machine learning play a role? in this and we have a lot of investment in this area i know you all have a lot of investment in this area maybe you could take a second to to highlight a little bit add a little bit of color to how you know ai and machine learning can help um, customer service teams in this way there's one of the data points uh, on the the slide that we looked at earlier uh, with the digital trends which shows that more than half of businesses are increasing their investments in ai in a variety of ways we're seeing that customer support teams are using AI themselves to speed up manual and time consuming processes. Uh, so where there's needs for agility, self-service, um, finding new ways of handling repetitive tasks are all ways that people are building in AI, uh, bots, machine learning into their processes. I think the learnings through all of this is that there needs to be more agile, be where your customers are in terms of the channels, messaging, build strong connections between your internal teams, which the pager duty integration does, uh, build more contextual knowledge in your CX staff about what's going on with the customer, with the business, and then empower them ultimately to resolve the issues and bring great experiences to the customer base. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I see this um, also from our side, which is uh, to your point of like how can this really deliver a lot of added value? There's the notion of suggestions, the notion of context, like anything that you can provide when, uh, you know, moments matter and, you know, there are stressful moments, anything you can do to make life easier for the, you know, for the people again on the front lines, the better. So yeah, it makes, makes total sense. I guess in light of everything we've talked about here, any words of wisdom, final thoughts, that you might have for our joint customers? I think really what it comes down to is the efficiencies and, and how you can optimize and be agile in these crazy times, uh, which will continue, be creative, but also there are a lot of best practices coming out. There are the, the leaders in the industry who are first and, and really doing that. And there's, there's great information out there on how, uh, if you're going in with the growth mindset to really understand what's happening there, to provide that context, to expand uh, the channels and capabilities that you're in. Uh, to use the integrations to connect your back service teams with your uh, front end uh, managers of the customer experience there. Uh, and the more that, you, that we're finding that businesses do that, uh, the happier their customers end up being. We have, a, <clears throat> we have a line internally we've been using, which is you can't have happy customers without happy customer service agents. And you can't have happy customer service agents without 
happy services. So they're all related. It's all linked together. Erica, thank you so much for taking the time today with us. And it's been a pleasure, really honored to have you here and uh, look forward to talking again soon in person, in person next time. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.